Hello everyone. Hope all are good and safe. It's still locked on in my place and I'm in my clinic trying to put together another video for you. Let's stay positive, hope for the best and make our time a little fruitful. Fine. Today we shall see the relief areas in maxillary arch. These are areas in the dentobering surface which do not have the ability to withstand masticatory forces. They may easily resorb under constant load or may contain nerves or blood vessels. Just as the name suggests, these are areas that require relief from masticatory load. That is, the denture has to be fabricated in such a way that load is not concentrated in these areas. The primary relieving areas in the maxillary arch are the incisive papilla and the mid-palate and raphae and the secondary relieving areas are the cuspid eminence, the torus palatinus and crest of the ridge. So we shall see the first one, the incisive papilla. Incisive papilla is a small oval or round shaped mucosal prominence in the midline seen behind the central incisors. In edentulous patients, it's seen in the midline just behind the crest of the ridge. Histologically, it's dense connective tissue and it is lined by stratified squamous epithelium which is keratinized. In my last class, I said these are some of the features that make an area capable of withstanding masticatory load. But then, why is incisive papilla a relieving area? See, this mound of tissue that is this incisive papilla is situated just above the incisive foramen. Foramen, as you know, is a hole or an opening in the bone through which a neurovascular bundle passes through. So this foramen is the exit point of nasopalatine nerve, which is the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve. This nerve innervates the palate and the structures around the anterior teeth, the frontal maxillary ethmoid and sphenoidal sinuses, the nasal septum, the septal mucosa, and also corresponds with the nerve on the opposite side that is a greater palatine nerve. Along with the nasopalatine nerve, this foramen is also the exit point for the sphenopalatine artery which is also called the artery of the head or the artery of epistaxis which you know is the bleeding from the nose and it's a branch of the maxillary artery. So if the incisive papilla is subjected to constant load, the underlying neurovascular bundle is going to be compressed and this can result in discomfort, pain, burning sensation, soreness, tingling, ulceration or even paresthesia and numbness over its area of innervation. Also, if resorption has progressed considerably, this incisive papilla comes closer to the crest of the ridge, thereby making it more susceptible to load. So, I hope that makes it clear to you that incisive papilla should be dealt with carefully, it shouldn't be subjected to any load and it becomes the primary relieving area in maxillary arch. Coming to the next one, the mid-palatine raphe. We are talking about this mound of tissue that is the incisive papilla. Now coming to the mid-palatine raphe, see this green line in the center of the palate. Okay, so this uh, mid palatine raphe is formed when the two palatine processes of the maxilla grow towards each other and fuse together in the midline. See, palate is formed by two process, palatine processes of the maxilla. They grow towards horizontal plates, they grow towards each other and fuse together in the midline, forming a mid palatine suture. Okay, so this dense ridge like or seam like thing in the center is the mid palatine raphe. And the overlying submucosa is very uh, thin and uh, non-resilient that is it doesn't offer any cushioning effect and the mucous membrane is very thin. So what happens is when your denture is placed here, this because this mucosa is very thin, it can easily traumatize the tissue and it can lead to pain and soreness. Also in certain people, this mid-palatine ridge may be very prominent, mm, just like a a big speed breaker hump in the road okay so if it is very prominent see uh, I cannot be like this but if it is very prominent and if your danger is going to get seated on this this prominent ridge can act as a fulcrum and it can lead to rocking of the danger it's a very rare scenario but it can happen so along with incisive papilla 
Mid palatine raphe also becomes the primary living area because any pressure on it can lead to pain, soreness, ulceration, or even rocking of the denture. Coming to the secondary living areas, one of them being torus palatinus. This is nothing but a bony prominence found in the roof of the mouth, usually in the mid palatine region. Uh, this is usually benign and harmless, and genetic and ethnic factors play a role in its appearance. Uh, but because the overlying mucosa is very thin and it can be easily traumatized and as I said before because this pro because when a denture sits on a prominence it can lead to loss of stability and rocking it becomes mandatory to relieve this area it, it can occur in various size and shapes unless it's very large surgical intervention is not indicated the next secondary relieving area is the Canine eminence. This is a bony prominence seen in the labial aspect of maxilla in relation to the root of the canine tooth. So even after extraction, this bony prominence will be left behind and it becomes a relieving area because of the prominence of the bone and the overlying thin mucosa. Coming to the last relieving area, secondary relieving area, that is the crest of the ridge, residual alveolar ridge. I think I mentioned this last class also. See, the crest of the ridge, especially after a recent extraction, it can be sharp and spiny. So the extraction sockets will be just under the process of remodeling. So any pressure can result in pain and discomfort for the patient. So the crest of the ridge becomes a, a relieving area. Okay, over a period of time, the crest undergoes remodeling, it becomes smooth and rounded. So then it becomes capable of withstanding stress. So until then, this becomes a secondary relieving area. Actually, there is no hard and fast rule that only the areas I mentioned are the relieving areas. Basically, any structure or any area in this denture bearing surface which is not capable of withstanding stress has to be relieved. For example, if there are certain folds of mucous membrane or if the mucosa is not firm and resilient in certain areas or if the patient has any bony prominence or a sharp undercut, all those areas require relief. Okay, so that is based on your experience and expertise and observation. So I think uh, we are at the end of today's class. Oh, one thing, uh, one of my friends was saying why I am using a demotivating pen with failure written on it. Actually, this is not failure. It says failure is not an option. That doesn't require any explanation, right? Okay, so with that, we wind up today's session. Thank you. Take care.